Well, hello there and welcome to this week's video here on the Rest of Saga Classic Car Restoration YouTube channel. And this week we are back looking at the Toylander 1. Um, on the last episode you saw that the colour coat had nearly been completed here on the main body shell, just the main inside parts left to be done and I'm still waiting on paint to be ordered for that. But I've also started moving on to the new panels such as the front grille. Um, it's really starting to come together. Um, they've got some components arriving, um, testing out different colours and different bits and bobs. So let's have a wee look at what we're doing, get a bit of an update and show you some more work in progress here on the Toylander 1. So the first thing to tell you about, as I said, is the front grille. Um, this is quite a complex part and it was difficult to cut out and there seems to be lots to do to this single panel. I suppose it is the face of the Toylander so really want to make sure it's done right. I cut this all out by hand, you saw it in the last video of me cutting the holes for the headlamps and that's using a hole saw that I borrowed from my brother-in-law who's a joiner by trade. Some extra holes have been drilled and countersunk, these little ones here, so there's six of those and the main aim of those is to hold the grill which I will get right now and demonstrate to you. And here it is. This is stainless steel mesh, I ordered this off eBay rather than off the Toylander website itself because thought it would be cheaper and as you know I have a bit of time and I'm trying to keep the cost to a minimum but also keep the quality high so I'm trying to buy all the best quality components I have for the least amount of money um, which yes takes a little bit longer but should keep the cost down. The thing about this mesh is that the strands, the, cr the sort of the vertical and horizontal strands are not actually like welded together or bonded they must just be held under um, against themselves by their own tension. So I was a little concerned whenever I cut the shape for the grill that it would all sort of ping apart and fall apart but it seems to have held together quite well and once it is held onto this front panel um, which Toylander themselves recommend using split pins so that's what I'm going to do just put a split pin around the mesh through the hole and then um, the holes are countersunk in the back my countersunk seems to have gone a bit blunt if you notice the way those are cut um, and it all just needs colour coded on the back so that was the mesh. Also ran the file around all these little sharp edges because this is going to be for my little son as I'm sure you're all aware and I don't want him catching his finger in anything sharp so those are all nicely blunted off. Um, next thing I ordered was one headlamp. Toilet on themselves. Um, big fan of their work um, but some of their components can be quite expensive so a set of lights I think plus wiring is about £70. So I did a bit of research and the headlamps that they recommend are actually these, which are reversing lamps of a Defender. Um, so at least it's a Land Rover product. It is to scale and they fit perfectly in the little holes and um, this is sitting down so it's not gonna sit down. And so I ordered one just to be double sure. Um, this was £12.95 off eBay. Um, of course, if you put Toylander in, they managed to add an extra pound in. So everybody's sticking their arm in for parts prices, but. So that's one, the second one is on its way. Now, if you look at the manual, um, which I'll just show you now, the manual shows you this sort of irregular shape for a um, headlamp. I've cut it as a circle without these little indents. I'll close that before I get accused of breaching copyright. Put it over there. Um, I've cut a circle, which then Toylander manual then says, put these little buttons on the back which I've done, two on each side, and I've comfort the edge in here because the back of the light is not flush, it has a sort of dome, presumably for reflection, um, so it has to sit in there nicely. So what these little buttons are going to do is that I can then drill through from the front and count and put the screws that are going to hold the lamps into these rather than into the front panel. So it's not just as tidy, but um, slightly more simple to do. So that's the front panel and that's nearly finished. Um, just needs a little bit of primer on the back to cover up those buttons and then color coat whenever I get some more. Well, it is ordered, but just with Christmas and so on has taken a little bit more time to come. So it's the front panel. Things to do, I have to go over it all. Again, with sandpaper, I ordered some, I got some really fine sandpaper today actually. So I'm gonna go over the whole body, rub it down um, rub down the sills and the back panel especially and the sills are going to be silver and I'm going to have to sort of stencil out 
the back panel for a chassis cross member type look, which I'll maybe show you towards the end of this video. Moving over here, um, this is the back of the seat. It has been PVA'd, primed, sanded, and now it's getting a coat of black, which is then going to be sanded and it's going to get lacquered because it's all going to be nice and shiny. Why I'm using black? Well, I could have gone grey, but I had some black left over and I was running out of grey and I didn't know how the primer would really look um, with lacquer over the top of it. So I was a bit suspicious of that. I'm trying to keep it as good as I can. Moving over here, this is are the front dumb irons. Again, PVA'd, primed, sanded. And then this is the front cross member, which now I've turned around the right way, but I do have two little extra holes that are gonna need filled. And I sort of forgot to do that. So those are gonna be silver. And this is the silver I'm then gonna use for the rear cross member on the main body tub. Coming back over then to the main body tub, Another thing to mention that I've ordered recently just for a trial is a little length of this aluminium angle. And the main reason for this is to sit on the top of the body, just on the edge. And this is to mimic the galvanized capping that would be on original Land Rovers. This is a 40 centimeter part, which is going to form the door top. And you have a nice little gap there, although it is slightly too long, but that's okay because I can trim it down and put the angle in for the door. And that's going to form that piece there. So I'm going to need to order some more of that. I really already ordered one, but to make sure it was appropriately sized. Um, because the wood, as you know, is 12 mil, and then there's a nice flush edge there. So I think it's going to look really well. Haven't worked out how I'm going to attach that. Whether to glue it or countersink screw it, not entirely sure of that. Rest of my prime panels sitting in there ready to get some color on them. Um, this bit here is the bottom of the windscreen frame. The windscreen frame is going to be made more out of this aluminium stripping. So I've ordered, ordered the wood for the tailgate as well. That's the next big thing I need to order is a bonnet. Um, but that's going to require a bit of more work. So body tubs really coming along. Um, not far off completing the body tub and then I can move on to the mechanicals, which I know I've been going on about for weeks. But um, I want to get a line drawn under this and then I can move on to the metal work. I'm going to put this down in storage so it doesn't get dirty from welding and all that and go from there. So let's do a bit of work and show you what I'm up to. So after a bit of a garage rejuggle, the Land Rover has been moved out and I've done a bit of tidying. Um, as you can see, I've taped up the area of the rear cross member of the Toylander and using the measurements provided by Toylander themselves and the instructions, I've marked out the outline of what the rear cross member should look like and the five little body tabs that hold the rear tub onto the chassis. That's all been measured out and now I'm just going to use a knife, go along, cut the tape off at those points and then sand down where I'm going to be painting silver, mask up the rest and then give it a blow over of silver. So that's the plan, hopefully it works. We'll see you in a wee second. So I've gone along the little outline here with a Stanley blade and also using a ruler to keep it nice and straight. So I'm going to try and peel this off without making too much of a mess. Here goes nothing. And there we go. Well, I think that's come out really well. Just going to go along the edges here, make sure they're all well stuck down. Then I'm going to sand this just to flat it off so that the silver will stick and mask up the rest because I don't want to paint the whole thing silver and then we'll get a bit of colour on it. Here we go. So this is the next step. Sorry about the central heating boiler going in the background. I got the tape peeled off as you saw just a second ago. The rest of it has been covered up with newspaper and I have put on some of my silver. I've also done along the sill because in a series one land over there would be a bit of exposed chassis. A little bit right the sides and the sills here as well. So done a couple of coats on there, really just nice gentle light dusting because I really do not want any runs at this stage, having managed to avoid them quite well so far. I'm gonna let that dry and then get the low tack tape off and see what it's like underneath. Catch you in a second. Ta-da! There we have it taken the low-tack masking tape off as well as my newspaper and 
and I think that's a pretty splendid job. The little tabs have come up really nice and crisp. Um, seems like a good straight line too, which is also nice. Um, also managed to remember to tape up the rear cross member hole where the PTO would come out so that the paint didn't go through on the other side. It's come round really nicely there and the sills have joined in as well. So I think it looks really good. I was a wee bit worried about that, how it was going to turn out, but I have to say that looks pretty splendid. Might put some screws in, two in each tab, just to make it look more realistic. Um, but next thing to do is go over the whole body with really fine grit sandpaper. Um, so feather all these edges in and then it's time for lacquer. But I don't know, I think I'll probably hold off on that until I've got everything done properly with a colour coat and then go in with the lacquer. So have to wait for some paint to arrive, some more parts to arrive, but we're really making progress here on the Toylander one. So just before I sign off on this video, um, we're back two days down the line. Um, my colour match paint has arrived, I got four tins of it. I finished one just tidying off the body, which is back here on top of my own Land Rover. I have primed the inside of the front panel, a further coat of silver on the chassis components, and some colour on the extra windscreen base, motor closure panel and the seat base and the reason I've only done half of it because really half of it is going to be black as well and there's no point in wasting colour underneath there. So next time you see this um, I will have all the components all painted. Um, I'll probably have it lacquered as well because really you're not going to be able to see a huge amount of difference and we'll be screwing some bits and pieces together. I also got the second headlight arrived as well, so the front panel is near enough finished and it will really look spot on. And there should be some timber arriving to make the tailgate as well. So I wanna thank you very much for watching this episode here in the Ref Desire Classic Car Restoration YouTube channel. We're really making some progress in the Toylander. Next episode, you're gonna see the bodywork all coming together and hopefully that will be it complete. And then it's on to the exciting bits that I'm looking forward to is making the axles, the drivetrain and getting all the mechanical side of it done. So once again, thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button down below, fire me a comment, hit me a like and I'll reply to all my comments and we'll catch you again next week. Thanks for watching.